Hi guys, uh, pretend you have a cart that's rolling along of mass M moving at speed V, and then it hits a spring, okay? It's eventually gonna come to rest, and the spring is of course going to compress. So let's see if we can figure out how far the spring is gonna compress given the other information in the problem. All right, well, how would we approach this? We could, of course, try to go through some force equations, kinematic equations, but there might be a much easier way to do this, which is conservation of energy, right? Conservation of energy tells us that that energy has to go somewhere. What's the energy initially? Well, it's all kinetic energy. What's the energy finally? It's all spring potential energy because you've compressed that spring. All right. We know what kinetic energy is. It's just one half mv squared. What about spring potential energy? Well, that is one half kx squared. And now this is our basic equation. And if we're solving for x in this case, then we can write very quickly, x is equal to what? Well, we can cross out the half on each side We've got an mv squared, we're going to divide by k, and then this was an x squared up there, so we need to take the square root of all that. If you have the square root of v squared, that just becomes v, and so we get the square root of m over k times v. Now, let's say you were given different parameters in the problem. Let's say we told you how far that spring gets compressed, we told you what kind of spring it was, and we told you the mass, and you had to solve for V. How would you do that? It's the exact same equation. All you have to do is solve it for V instead of for X. So let's do that. Again, we have a half on both sides, so we can multiply by two and cross those out. We're gonna need to divide by M in this case, and you can probably guess what we're gonna get kx squared over m, all of that square rooted. Once again, the x comes out of the equation, and so this becomes k over m times x. All right, let's try some numbers and see what works out. Okay, and let's pretend that the mass of this thing is, hmm, how about 20 kilograms? Let's say the spring is fairly strong, so we'll say a thousand newtons per meter for the spring constant. And let's say that X is 10 centimeters. That's how far the spring got compressed. In SI units, of course, that's 0 0.1 meters. Okay, and now let's plug it into V and see what we get. Okay, what we said was V was square root of K over M times X. We now have all those numbers. We can plug it in. SI units, so we don't have to write down the units every time. K is 1,000. M, we said, was 20 kilograms. X is 0 0.1 meters. So what do we get here? Well, square root of 1,000 over 20, that's the same as 100 over 2, which is the same as the square root of... 50. We've got a 0 0.1 hanging out there. You can almost do this in your head, right? Because 50 is really close to 49. And we know that the square root of 49 is 7. So let's take 7 and we'll just add a little bit to it. 7.1. And we're going to multiply that by 0 0.1. So this becomes 0 0.71 SI units, meters per second. Let's just try it with our handy dandy calculator and double check. 50 square root times 0.1 is 0 0.707. So our guess was nearly right on the money, meters per second. Okay, hopefully that's clear. Cheers.